Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We gather today to celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This weekend is a collection for the Catholic University of America, but there will be only one collection. In your kindness, please put any donations in the basket provided by our ushers. We thank you for your generosity. Please silence any electronic devices and let us take a moment to quiet ourselves as we prepare now for our worship. And we remember those who lost their lives 20 years ago today. Glory of the Cross, 289. Mm -hmm. serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See the Lord, God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, o Lord. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist. Others, Elijah. Still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Caesarea Philippi. A journey of 125 miles to Christ's crucifixion. That's the distance. It's like going from Newark, New Jersey down to Great Adventure. 125 miles. Jesus is going to walk that with his disciples. Questions, questions, questions. It is a characteristic of God not only to forgive sins, but to ask questions. For example, the Lord God calls out to Adam after Adam sins, Where are you? We find that in the book of Genesis 3 9. Is not that the Lord is ignorant, but he asks questions because he wants all of us to think rightly. In today's gospel, we read of the first two questions that Jesus asked along the way to Caesarea Philippi. Who do the people say that I am? Do you think with any stretch of imagination that he does not know what the people think of him? What appears to be a moment of ignorance in the disciples' eyes becomes an exercise of awareness as Jesus is challenging the disciples to come to think of what others are saying about him and all the goodness he brings. His follow-up question is more important than the first question. But who do you think I am? Who do you say that I am? He wants us to accept him for what and all that he brings to us. He wants disciples then, and you and I now, to think who he really is. He's not a crucifix of gold 24 karat that we wear around our neck. It's not about what we put on the back of our cars. <laughs> it's in our hearts and how we act Christ-like is where he's going with his questions. In coming to understand in our hearts and mind the answers of these two questions, we will then be able to clearly see the differences between opinions and the real faith 
that James speaks about in our readings today. You know, another question comes to mind. Why did Jesus choose to leave Capernaum and make his way to Caesarea Philippi? Joining him was just a few of his close disciples, and along the way he proceeded to challenge them. Challenge them with just those who were accompanying him on his journey to his crucifixion. Caesarea Philippi was an ancient Roman city, and it was located at the base of Mount Hermon. The city is mentioned in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark along with other readings of, oh, many, many scholars who wrote about this place that, well, let's go a little bit further and you'll find out what kind of a place this is. It is located in this region and it's known as Panya for the Greek god Pan. Today the city no longer is inhabited, but it's a significant archaeological site in the Golan Heights. And we hear about the Golan Heights every time somebody burps in Israel. Today the city is no longer inhabited. It's known by many names. And depending whether the Israeli or the Arabic nations control the area, which name it would be identified as. Panyan. Banyan, and it's because the Arabic community's um, spelling does not have the same letters as the Israeli spellings do, nor the Latin, nor the English. The spring of water that emerges from here is the beginning of the Jordan River, and it flows from a cave which became the center of pagan worship. During the time of Christ, human sacrifices were cast into the cave as offerings to the God Pan. Jesus is taken and asking these questions that are presented in today's Gospel at the primary source of the Jordan River. In Jesus asking this question, who do the people say that I am, it must be noted that the geographical location has great significance. The source of the Jordan River is the only sweet water that feeds and nourishes the people. It is the source of faith that we hear again from St. James's letter. A source of life that again we hear from our readings, second reading. And it's God's natural design. Jesus, through the writings of St. Mark, brings us to this source why? Because Caesarea Philippi and why this particular location is such a prominent part of the gospel. As we come to understand it, you're going to know the difference between your opinions and your true faith. Herod Antipas and Philip, along with their wives, had been attending an affair in Rome. And as I go on with the story, think about how many people go away and they're not true to the loved ones. I'll come out, just be right front, up frank with everybody. So Herod Antipas and Philip, along with their wives, have been attending an affair in Rome. Herod Antipas seduces Philip's wife and marries her. And in asking for a divorce from Philip, she leaves Philip's house and moves in with Antipas. Philip was extremely humiliated as he became the joke of Galilee. Philip knew what the people thought of him and he sorely hated his brother for that. So when Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, Antipas, who hated Jesus, knew that just for spite, Philip would protect Jesus. Modern day thoughts. Do you see the results of five of the seven capital sins coming to life? There is the sin of pride. There is the sin of envy. There is the sin of lust. The sin of greed. And the sin of wrath. Don't you love how politics 
rules God's creatures and his creations then and today? You know, the actions of Philip in developing this den of inequity had all of the markings of two places here in the United States. The acceptance of behavior patterns in Las Vegas and the patronizing of trash media in multiple forms coming from a place we call Hollywood, California. You and I, like the disciples, are surrounded by multiple forms of temptations on a daily basis. The forms of temptations that the disciples were witnessing on this particular day were very much visual and extremely gruesome as we, you and I, accept abortion. You and I accept nudity on movies. Looking into the mouth of that cave that I spoke about, to the right of it stood a white marble temple built by Herod the Great and dedicated to Augustus Caesar. It was there the god of Pan was worshipped. Pan is a member of the Greek gods as well as the Romans. Pan was responsible for pastures. He portrays as being Mr. Good Guy. Sheep, shepherds. And he directly supported those who were responsible for seduction, for rape, and the sacrificing of young children. The god Pan was portrayed either by playing a flute or raping innocent people. The god Pan has two faces one being over-caring, and the other cruel and inhumane. In Philippi, a lot of vices took place. Not only was there the exercising of immoral and wicked behavior, but in that cave, they also started to worship the ancient Greek god of the underworld. The god of the underworld. Do we know who that is? Mm. Yeah, you bet place called Hades. We've heard about Satan. Jesus is selecting Caesarea Philippi to start his 125 mile journey to his crucifixion. His quiet, quietly observing all these temptations brought forth by Satan as his creations are led astray. Standing in front of that cave, he asks his questions not only to his disciples, but my dear friends in Christ, He's asking you and I, but who do you say that I am? Let us return back to the book of Genesis 126. We hear Jesus and God in the very beginning of his making the creations. He says, let us make man in our image, our likeness. He created male and female. He created them. And what was Jesus looking at? when he was looking at that cave and the actions going on. You and I are blessed to bear the likeness of his son and his daughter. We are privileged to be the first of many of his brothers and sisters, and we must never disregard the responsibility of being true believers of Christ. As Jesus rebukes Peter, get behind me, Satan. He looks to all of his disciples then and now, and teaches all of us, when we are tempted to think merely as human beings, we must come to remember in faith, and as St. Paul writes to the Corinthians, we are blessed to have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It is only then that we do think Christ-like, that we can really get behind Jesus, and follow him. God bless. Father.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. It's the praise of the Lord in His name. For the goodness of all the Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and every way to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, in Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Mm -hmm. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Community hymn will be number 500, our blessing cup. 500.
heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Knights of Columbus will be sponsoring a breakfast in the parish center until 12.30 today. Please join them and help to support the Knights. Friday, September 17th, there will be a Mass of the Holy Face of Jesus at 7 p.m. in the church. Doors will open at 6.30 p.m. to pray the rosary. Please check the bulletin for further information. Next weekend, Father Hyacinth, Jim Ebola, will be preaching at all Masses on behalf of the Emmanuel Family Institute as part of the mission appeal for the propagation of the faith. And as always, please take home a bulletin when you leave. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our daily lives. Thank you. Thank you. Our recessional hymn, 749, America the Beautiful. 749.